Hey guys, it's Brandon Miniman from PocketNow.com, and in this video we're going to talk about the honeycomb interface paradigm. That is how everything is arranged on the screen, sort of the philosophy behind the interface, what you see and what you interact with, on the Zoom tablet in Honeycomb. Let's get to it. So we don't cover tablets on PocketNow.com, we do smartphones, we like to stick to that, uh, but I'm a tablet enthusiast. And I have a lot of thoughts about the Motorola Zoom, so I thought I'd put this video up there for those of you that watch our videos on YouTube, because maybe uh, you're thinking about getting the Zoom, or you're thinking about get us getting the, the other Android tablets coming out this year, because there's going to be a lot of them. Just want to talk about a few things here. There are a lot of good things and a lot of not-so-good things about Honeycomb. So let's start with the good things. First good thing to talk about is this home screen. It's the dashboard you wish you had on your iPad. From here, you can quickly glance through your emails. You can see your next uh, calendar appointment. You can scroll through your, your favorites. You can look through Android applications uh, that Google recommends. You can look through YouTube videos. You can add widgets uh, to your heart's content and get this active live information on your home screen, which is really fantastic. So you don't have to sit there like you do on the iPad and go into your email, then go into uh, YouTube, and then go into your favorites. Or, or, or Safari. It's just a dashboard, a launching point uh, from which you can do really anything and catch up on information that matters to you. It makes a lot of sense, but then there's stuff about Honeycomb that just doesn't make any sense. Let me show you. So we're going to bounce into the email application here. It's loading an email, so I've got a picture here somewhere. Um, it's going to load the picture. There it is. Great. HTC Pyramid, perhaps. Now, right now, we are in the preview viewing area, right? So we've got the, Im the, the messages on the right, on the left, and the preview on the right. I need to learn left from right still, apparently. Um, so let's say we delete a message. And when you delete a message or when you check off a message, you get this thing that comes across, right, that pops up, something that wasn't there before. And you can either click Done and the check mark goes away, or you can action on it over here. So let's say we want to delete it. Okay, so I deleted one thing, and it stayed in this view, but watch what happens when I delete two things. It goes into another view when I delete two things. That makes absolutely no sense. It's very, very confusing, and it's just kind of silly. So let's go back into a message and talk more about how the Honeycomb interface is laid out and sort of the, the philosophy behind it. So in Honeycomb, in the native applications, System menu options or program menu options occur in the upper right corner. It's kind of an inconvenient spot because you're constantly having to reach all the way there to the upper right corner to change uh, certain menu options. Whereas in Android for smartphones, the menu options come up from the bottom, right? When you press you know, that menu button that is present on every single Android phone. So it's a little bit annoying to have to reach up to the upper right corner. And then in a lot of applications, you'll get a variety of icons up here, which you don't really know what they are until you tap them. They're not labeled. Some of them are a little bit unclear. Uh, and then you get this little menu option, which is common to a lot of Honeycomb apps. This is sort of like the menu or the file that you would get on a Windows computer or a Mac. Okay, so let's go into another application and talk about the interface now you get a totally different experience if you go into an app that's not made for Honeycomb. And because there are only 37 apps made for Honeycomb, plus the built-in ones, uh, most of the time you're going to be experiencing a different kind of interface. So Honeycomb's kind of inconsistent. So now, this application, New York Times, is made for smartphones, not for tablets. So we have this extra fourth button down here, which is the the menu that you would typically see on your smartphone. So now the menu occurs on the bottom of the screen, whereas in the email app, which we were just in, the menu options occur in the upper right corner of the screen. It's very inconsistent, and it, it, it very much makes us think that Honeycomb was an afterthought. Uh, Android applications from the beginning weren't built so that they worked on a tablet. You could argue the same about iOS, but at least in iOS, you don't have this problem where there's the extra menu button that needs to be there for legacy apps. And again, this wouldn't be such a, such, a, such a big problem if there were more Honeycomb apps. There are only 37 Honeycomb apps, or perhaps there are more, uh, but there are no way of sort of just seeing the tablet apps except through the Featured Tablets app section. When you see Featured, that means that they are taking from the best. 
but there's no other way to see all of the tablet apps. I don't think there are any. So if we scroll down, there's no tablet section. If we scroll down, there are there's no tablet section. The only tablet section here is right here, featured tablet apps, and that has 37 items listed. And some of these, even though they're listed in the tablet app section, are not optimized for Honeycomb. I'll give you an example. If we scroll down, we'll see Kindle, which I've already downloaded here, so I'll go back to the home screen, open up Kindle, this is obviously not optimized for a tablet. I mean, no one's email address is this long and their password is certainly not this long. Furthermore, you know this is a smartphone app because, I'll put the keyboard down, you get this fourth button here. That's a clear indication that this is not a Honeycomb app. So then why is Google putting it in the featured app section? I was hitting this button because I was trying to hit that button. And so here's the multitasking menu. It's pretty cool. Uh, it gives you little previews. It only lets you switch between five apps at a time, which is strange because in uh, Gingerbread and Froyo, you can switch between eight apps. And in iOS, you can switch between, well, depending on whether you're orienting your device in landscape or portrait, uh, probably about 10 apps or so. But here in Honeycomb, you only get five and you always know your most recent app because it goes to the bottom of the screen here. So a lot of inconsistencies about where the menus are and things like that. Now, how about some, some good things about Honeycomb beyond just the, the home screen interface here, sort of the dashboard? Well, over here in the bottom right corner, this collects all of your notifications in one place. It's like the notification center, and it makes a lot of sense. It's very similar to the Android notification shade on smartphones. It's a lot better than you get in iOS where notifications just pop up in your face all the time and really annoy you. Here you get notifications and there's kind of a, uh, an earthquake notification because there's, there's an app downloaded here called uh, Earthquake. You can see all the fingerprints on the screen. So that sends notifications. And when you're working on something, whether you're browsing the web or doing anything else, the notifications are very unobtrusive. They just sort of simmer in the bottom right corner. You can action on them immediately or they will fade away or you can press the X to force them to go away for good. So the notification system is really awesome. Let's talk about the web browser. The web browser I found to be incredibly unstable. Uh, about one out of every five times I use the browser it crashes and even when I'm not doing anything that intense. The cool thing about the browser is that you get the Chrome-like interface here with the tabs and the buttons. But when you start opening lots of different tabs, uh, we'll just keep opening tabs, it gets really unwieldy to manage the tabs. You can't close them all in one shot. You have to click on them individually, whoops, and close them, and close them, and close them, and it's just, it's not that intuitive. They should have the X button built right into every tab so that you can manage tabs more easily. And there's not that many options you can play with here, so we can go over here to the favorites, and it, it shows cool little previews, and you can change the view uh, to list view. And again, I'm using this little menu in the upper right corner. You can see some sort of foam. That's what that is over here. Uh, and let's go back. And we can also go to search. We can use voice search and say, turn on speech recognition, pizza. And of course, the voice recognition in Honeycomb, in, in Android in general, is very, very good. So you can use your voice to search. Uh, Safari can't do that on the iPad, of course. Uh, we could do a lot of other things. We can add as favorites with the one touch. Um, we can go into the settings. And very basic settings, so we can change the home page. This is really cool. Sync with Google Chrome. So you can actually sync your passwords and your bookmarks with your Honeycomb tablet. Now that Chrome has that feature, it's really great. Privacy and security, you can clear cache and do all the things that you typically can do. Um, search engine, you can change that. There's a really cool setting in labs I actually want to cover. So it's called quick control. Watch what happens. It shrinks the, uh, the address bar and gives you a lot more screen real estate. It's better demonstrated when there's nothing on the screen. Now to access the functions of the browser, you slide your thumb over. This is cool. This is innovation right here. Uh, so you get a big full screen view. You can do that from any side. You got to kind of learn what these what these uh, icons mean, but they're pretty obvious. So back, forward, refresh. Uh, this one will show the URL bar. Put the keyboard down. Let's see what else we got. Uh, favorites, uh, new tab, and the menu options here from the upper right corner. So the browser is pretty good as long as it doesn't crash on you. Uh, it would also be nice to be able to have uh, better tab management. They're halfway there with the way the tabs are shown sort of like a browser on a desktop but they're not all the way there because you don't get the X button um, 
and it just there's no way to rearrange tabs. They're missing a lot of features, really, is what is what I'm trying to say. Let's go back to the home screen. And one more UI element just want to point out here. Nothing surprising here. This is the application tray. Uh, this, quite simply, is a listing of your apps, and you can go over to My Apps if you want to get the apps that you've downloaded onto your Android tablet. So overall, Android Honeycomb has a lot of promise, but the interface paradigm is a little bit confusing. Uh, sometimes you'll get buttons in the upper right corner. If you download a non-native Honeycomb app, the menu options will occur on the bottom of the screen instead of the top of the screen. Email does some weird things, the browser does some weird things, and it crashes. Uh, I think Honeycomb version you know, 3.1 or whatever is coming out next will address a lot of these things, but right now, Honeycomb really truly feels like an afterthought, and even with this awesome sort of dashboard of information, the iPad looks much better because it's so much more mature uh, than the Zoom at this moment in time. So that's really it for this video. Just wanted to talk a little bit about some thoughts with the Motorola Zoom and with Android Honeycomb. If you have any comments, please leave some below and give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching, and that's it for now.